Here we go. Welcome to Fort Knox. I'm not at the NASDAQ market site today. I'm John Fort here live streaming from Iconic, still in New York, but this is our collaboration with Inc. Magazine. It's about entrepreneurship. It's about small business. It's about growth and figuring out ways to have growth. And I'm bringing on some entrepreneurs uh, today. I'm going to talk to you about your products, how you're getting the word out. Jamie, Hi, John. thanks for joining me. So what do you got here, Jamie? So after a big spill ruined the computer of ours, my father and I set out, we, st we started to look at uh, ways that we could create a really innovative type of coffee mug. Put this on? Yeah, yeah. Just say, just say that. Just hold okay. Uh, so after a big spill ruined the computer of ours, my father and I started to look at ways we could come up with a better, smarter type of coffee mug, travel mug. So after a lot of different iterations, testing, prototyping, uh, we came up with the Mighty Mug. The Mighty Mug. So, okay, I, I pick this up, I look at it, it kind of looks like an ordinary mug. Um, and of course, I got my laptop here, and we've all been in that situation where you're drinking something, you're doing some work, and you don't want an accident to happen. Absolutely, that's, that's exactly what we found. And so the innovation that we, we brought to the, to the market was that when you knock into it, literally like you could knock into it pretty hard, like if you see your, your laptop's moving pretty uh, ferociously right there. Yeah, so, you know, say I have it sitting here and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I got coffee in here, oops. Yep. It's not going to, I right. mean, come on. Oh. Uh, eventually, if, 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 you, if you punch like through it, a bit, it will fall. Still, that's pretty good. But yeah, you it's, gotta. It's, it's, the tap isn't gonna knock it over. It's about seven pounds of pressure. So most of the times when we knock into something, um, oh, sorry about that. Most of the most of the times when we knock into something, it's really like just like a quick tap. Yeah. But the real magic for this is that when you need a sip, you just lift it up, and it happens automatically. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So, tell me about the mechanism here, because I see. I'll let you guys see a little bit. Hold it out to you. There's this little wavy part in here. It looks like there are some tracks down here, down on the bottom. You know, we can see it feels kind of like suction. So, so basically what happens is when you put the mug down and it's at its resting state, it's trapping air underneath it, which is creating a vacuum and that's what causes suction. But then when you lift it up, it's on a rail system. So you can see it spreads a bit right there and that lifts the vacuum, it releases the vacuum, and because pressure is instantly stabilized, goes back normalized, it lifts naturally. So you see like there's no suction here. I lift it, I put it down, and then it's gonna grip. Now that is cool, but is it expensive? So how much does it cost to add your patented? Well, that, that ranges, but the actual cost- This is patented though, right? We, we, have, we have two utility okay, patents all right, all right, all right. globally. We're very, very ferocious with uh, defending <laughs> those things. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the cost of the mug is pretty much in line with the rest of the market. So we right. range from sixteen ninety nine up to twenty four ninety nine. That's how much we, mugs cost these days. Yeah, I mean, there, there's always there's, nice mugs. There's always lower. There, nice mugs. There's always higher. Right, right. But for us, we really we saw this as a global like when, when we when we look at the global market. If you ask anyone, no matter where they are, no matter what their background, race, country they're they're in, no one likes spilling. It's just a global right. thing. So I hear there's an island somewhere in the Pacific where they like spilling, but we won't <laughs> we won't sell to any of those people, I guess. Yeah, right? they, they won't be our customer. <laughs> so that's the that's the commonality is you know more and more we've got these valuable objects, right? Besides just the papers on the table, and we don't want to spill anything on them. It, ex exactly. If you have a five hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar computer and this cost you sixteen ninety nine to twenty four ninety nine it's it's a small price to pay it's a small insurance policy so I mean I, I could see this being in every Best Buy around the around the country. Oh, I didn't think of that. What do you think? Sell it where you sell the electronics. <laughs> I mean that makes some sense. I mean, I'm not lie, that, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So um, I want to make sure that people know um, that they can uh, they can ask questions about this. So, uh, you are selling these where? MightyMug.com, right now. MightyMug.com, yep. okay, it's called the mm -hmm. Mighty Mug. And we're actually, we're distributed in 30 countries around the world. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, how many of these have you sold, and how long have you been selling them? 
Uh, we've been selling it for about four years right now, and we've, we're coming up on about 2.5 million units sold. 2.5 million units. Okay, it's 16 to 20 something yeah. bucks a pop. Once again, this is the Mighty Mug, and it looks like an ordinary pedestrian mug. You know, you drink from it, whatever. Sit it down next to your laptop, but it doesn't knock over and ruin your keyboard. Absolutely. Jamie, what's the name of the company? Is the company's name Mighty Mug? Mighty Mug, yep. And you started with your dad? Yep. Okay. Family business. Um, so what's your main market? Mostly in the U.S.? You say you're in, what, 30 countries? Yeah. Uh, the U.S. is always on an individual country basis for most companies, I would think. It's a, it's a huge market. Uh, but really for us, people that love the next thing, that innovative item uh, that's going to make their life easier. There's a magical aspect to the item. So if you bring this back to your office, you can, you're going to show people. And that's really, we have that viral aspect built into the item. And I think that's what makes it really special. I mean, plus it's just, it's kind of fun to, to demo. When you got the cup, you pick it up and then it doesn't knock over onto it, your... It, exactly. Exactly. And you could even do it like, see, try, try it over there. I think it'll... On the laptop? On the laptop. Try it. Are you crazy, man? Yeah. It's on the it. laptop now. Got it. There's maybe a little bit of texture. I don't. Ah. Uh, good. Yeah, I was scared. I think I think I think you could might maybe even get away with it like that. For That's a while. just nuts. <laughs> Let's not do. That's just crazy. That's crazy. Now you're yeah. at home. You 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 go into the shower and you stick it on the door and you just try to knock it off. We, All kinds of places. We use don't it you? for everything. Yes. Um, which gets me thinking. You could. There have to be other things that you could do. Sippy cups. I'm a dad. I mean, this, that's what you really need this for is sippy cups. Of course, the kid, crazy kids, toddlers will just pick it up and throw it if they can't knock it over. I think, I think we need you as a consultant. I, hey, every parent will tell you <laughs> no. who's been through that stage will tell you. Absolutely. We're working on a bunch of applications of uh, technology right now. Social media marketing. What's your main marketing challenge to get the word out about this? So uh, I think we've been really blessed. We've been really lucky in that the item is actually amazing. So people have found us organically. And because of that, we've had over 75 million organic exposures on YouTube. If you YouTube us, you'll see there's a video. So you did a video on YouTube. Uh, actually, it's been all influencers just talking about us. Oh, I, so I, other people doing the videos other, for you. Other people. If, if I come here and I tell you how amazing it is, it's a lot different than if someone that you trust and, and know tells you it's amazing. So, we so are you like to, sending mugs to influencers? We, we do now, but when we first started, it just it just happened. Wow. So, yeah. Well, Jamie, very cool. The Mighty Mug. I know we've got... Scrub Daisy is over here too, and they're ready to bring in some stuff. I'm going to talk to them as well. Jamie, it's been great. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for I appreciate it. showing us uh, the Mighty Mug, which I think is very cool. Can I might take it. I'll... I'm, I'm going to FedEx you. Yeah. All right. Um, so it's going to be a couple minutes before Scrub Daisy comes over. Can you, can you throw me a box over? Because, yeah. Go on. Let's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. He's getting ready. Now, I heard a little bit about this a few minutes ago. I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around what it is that we're about to see. Scrub Daisy. So this is for it's a product for for washing dishes, that kind of thing. We're gonna find out. I mean, it, it definitely looks different than anything that you'd ordinarily uh, see at the store. And what we've got here is iconic, that iconic, which, which I think is cool. It's just a variety of different entrepreneurs, a variety of different ideas that are coming out at us. We've had um, people in technology. There's a guy I met who is uh, selling to governments a software system that gets the word out uh, about various updates and things that people need to know. Um, we had Mighty Mug just on with just technology um, that keeps things from falling over onto your keyboard. We've uh, also had a number of entrepreneurs who have made hundreds of millions of dollars. So this morning I was on stage speaking uh, with the CEO and co-founder of MailChimp, um, which is a company for email marketing. Email supposedly dead, well, apparently not, uh, because he's doing $400 million plus in revenue. Come on in. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Excited to uh, demonstrate our new product line. Yeah, so you go gonna... about... Scrub Daisy and uh, the Scrub Daddy Company, and uh, where we're going next. Okay, so you're going to explain this obviously much better than I can. 
So this is like a new generation of the dish sponge? Well, if you're familiar with Scrub Daddy, uh, we've become the most successful item ever in the show, Shark Tank. Shark Tank, yes. Um, and we started with a smiley face sponge made from a real unique polymer. It's actually a highly engineered polymer that changes texture with water temperature, rinses clean, never scratches or smells, and it's in the smiley face. Of course you're happy when things come out clean. Yes. Okay, so what do your sales figures look like? Uh, so we started with $100,000 was when I went on Shark Tank, and four years later we've uh, hit $150 million in retail sales. Wow. Where We're are you every selling major now? retailer in everywhere. the country, everywhere from Bed Bath, Walmart, Target, CVS, Kroger, Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, Meyer, Menards. If you name a, a big retailer, we're in it. And I do um, two to three live QVC shows a week as well. Is that your main sales channel? No, actually, it's a it's a really nice blend now between all of the brick and mortar and Amazon and QVC. Where does online come into the mix, or does it at all? I mean, when you got all those major brick and mortar channels when you got QVC sure. does the online channel the social media matter oh absolutely we're so heavily into online we love the direct communication with the customer and to be honest with you our online business is up 600 percent this year on Amazon and the way that we're structuring that is we've narrowed it down to one uh, authorized retailer uh, reseller on Amazon so we don't have this uh, price war going on and, and the price being diminished everywhere with you know someone at their house saying, oh, well, I'll sell one and make 10 cents on it. This is not appropriate. And that messes up all of our other retail distribution. So we have one reseller, and they're growing through the roof. Why do you need a reseller on Amazon? I mean, this is your product. Amazon is a channel. Why don't sure. you just put it directly in there? Well, because I've decided to focus the company more on the manufacturing and the logistics and distribution. We really don't want to be shipping small quantities out to little places, ones and twos. So for us, I ship a truckload, and I know in 30 days I'm getting paid. I'm not sending it into an Amazon warehouse where it could sit for a long time. Uh, it's very good for our logistics, for our cash flow, um, and, it, and I don't have to have an entire dedicated team just for online. We just ship as we do to our normal brick and mortar store, and that's pretty much the way that the company is currently set up. Take me back in time. How did this get started? Mm -hmm. You talked about the unique polymer. I mean, are you a chemist? What no. <laughs> I'm actually a crackpot. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I've been an engineer, uh, not an engineer, I've been an inventor since I was a little kid. Uh, uh -huh. I've always been tinkering with things. I love taking things apart, seeing how they work. And uh, so it was inevitable that at some point I would start to create some new inventions. In um, 1994, I invented my first patent, which was a buffing pad for cars and boats and planes and marble. And that product uh, turned into a worldwide manufacturing company, manufacturing these kind of products that, that you polish your cars with. Uh, and in 2008, that company was actually acquired by the behemoth 3M. Ah, uh, so they 3M, know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Polymers, they, in yeah. fact, they're the largest company in the world for um, for buffing pads and for uh, car cleaning products. Um, and you know, during our acquisition. I had invented several other products while I was in this business. They were accessories for cleaning cars and boats and stuff. One of them, I invented a sponge for mechanics and body shops and detailers to scrub their dirty hands. And we called it Scrub Daddy. Our sales were minuscule. We had a very difficult time selling this product into that channel. And because of it, into the, into the, the automotive, automotive channel for scrubbing your hands. For scrubbing your hands. And because of that, the sales were Why? so small. Why? Because they don't care if their hands are dirty a, or not? It's a $4 sponge. And the mechanics and the body shops, these guys would probably rather go home with dirty hands and spend $4 to scrub <laughs> their hands clean. Right. And so it really was the wrong channel and the wrong market. Um, but again, the product was invented for that particular uh, uh, Level of and, grime. Yeah, well, it was, and for, that, yeah. And that, for that, that market, for that purpose, for scrubbing hands. We didn't know it was a, a dishwashing scrubbing tool. And so it's really important that uh, I'm kind of a pack rat. When I invent something or I discover something, I market and I save it and who knows what it will become one day. And it didn't get included in the acquisition when 3M bought the business because they didn't see a value in it just like we didn't know what it was for. And it actually sat in the back of the factory from 2008 until 2011. Now, how many names are on this patent? Because you said you're not a chemist, right? No, it's, it's, it's me. It's my name. Okay. Yeah, so I, I invented the material uh, and I and also came up with the, the smiley face shape. That's actually what the patent is on. The material is actually intellectual property. It's actually not a patent. How do you invent a material that does that? Uh, so I had 20 years experience making buffing pads, and the companies that we were making buffing pads were foaming companies. So I knew all the companies in the world that manufacture urethane foams. And when I started this project to make a hand scrubber, I reached out to all those companies and said, I'm looking for a material that can do this and this. I want it to be really hard. I want the pore sizes to be open so it's really rough. 
they started sending me materials. And I would test them and say, hey, can you make it a little bit denser? Can you make it a little bit stiffer? Can you make the holes a little bit wider? Can, and we went through this process. Eventually, I had this amazing material that scrubbed our hands like no other, much better than that, that lava soap. Or that has, it's like rocks with lotion. I can't stand the way that feels. <laughs> And I wanted to get away from that, so uh, that's how Scrub Daddy was actually born. And that's actually, he's using our new Scour Daddy product, that's okay. not Scrub Daddy. This is actually Scrub Daddy material here. Okay. And this one is actually This is our, rougher. It's a little bit rougher, that's why we call it Scour Daddy. Yeah, you feel the difference? You can hear the difference, can't you? <laughs> that's scrubbing. That's Scour. That's Scouring. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Coincidentally, the product sat on the back of the shelf uh, from 2008 to 2011 when my, my beautiful wife started nagging me to clean the lawn furniture one day. Ah. And I started out using a traditional uh, sponge with a green scouring pad on the back and it scratched the paint. And I thought, what could I use that wouldn't scratch? And then I remembered this box that I labeled junk that was sitting in the back of the factory. Wow. And I went and pulled it out and I started doing the lawn furniture with it and it worked so well that I ended up bringing it back inside that day and I started doing the dishes with it. And it was in, it had this, these two eye holes and I put my fingers into the eye holes and I went into a cup and when I pulled it out, I realized, oh my God, if it had a mouth, I could clean the silverware. And then Scrub Daddy, smile Wait, face. Wait, if it had a mouth, you could clean the silverware? Yeah, sure. I, so, I missed a step in there somewhere. So if I put a smile face as a sponge, uh -huh. you can put two fingers into the smile face. Uh -huh. Now you don't have to hold the sponge anymore, it holds on to you. So yeah. now you can get into cups and bowls and mugs and coffee pots and muffin tins. You're almost there. <laughs> yeah, almost. Right? It looks painful yeah. for the scour daddy, well, but this is, this is more they don't this have one. feelings. You don't, you don't need to use your fingers on this Yeah, one. I know. I'm just trying to provide, you know, a visual some, some for the folks at home. Uh, yeah, you got to be a little bit of a sadist too, I suppose. All right. Then the mouth, you can put spoons, knives, forks, and spatulas, squeeze it, and pull, and it cleans both sides of them at the oh, same time. So it's like you're feeding scrub daddy. Well, you feed him, and he cleans for you at the same time. All right. So uh, that's how the original Scrub Daddy product got started. It's a great and, story. And uh, went on Shark Tank, uh, became partners with Lori Grenier, uh, and it's gone viral since. Uh, how do the other How do the other sharks treat you? Were they all like, was Mark Cuban like, I've never washed dishes before, so I don't so like it. So let's see. Robert Hershevik said he did not see the retail vision. Mm. Uh, we're now at every major retailer in the country, and, and we're growing around the world uh, exponentially as well. And um, Mark Cuban said he wasn't a scrub pimp, so he was out. Yeah. Uh, Kevin O'Leary made me a really bad offer, so I told him he was out. Let me guess. He wanted like a share of the profits. Right, he wanted 50% of the company for the money. <laughs> um, All right. And uh, so I told him he was out. And then it turned into a bidding war between Lori and Damon John. And uh, and actually, Kevin came Damon back John in is here today, and wanted one of his uh, royalty deals. And at the end of the day, <laughs> the whole end of the day, I negotiated them all, and uh, and I went with Lori. Um, and, and she's been a spectacular partner. And what was and Lori's deal? Uh, Lori's deal was 20%. For uh, two hundred thousand dollars for twenty percent, which is a hundred thousand dollars more than I had come into the Shark Tank asking for. Yeah. And since then, not only have we grown Scrub Daddy and this new product, Scrub Daisy, which is the most spectacular dish one, utilizing all of our Scrub Daddy materials, but I haven't stopped, and I'm going to show you something new today that's Ooh. launching on the market in about a month, and it's called the Zoo Belt. And, uh, oh wow, that thing! I thought that was like a, a yeah. battery or something for okay. my cell phone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this. Whoa, what's here. going on over there? So okay, here's my belt. Looks like a normal, <laughs> typical belt. Yeah. Except that I'm walking around with a full day charge on my belt. It is a battery. And is it safe to have a battery actually, that close to your uh, uh, we'll, belly I'll, button? I'll actually get into that. Yeah. Full size USB. You plug it in, and I'm walking around with a full charge. I just pull my cord out. Whoa! Oh, you're right. Uh, yeah. Don't whip that out. <laughs> I grab my phone. Yeah. We're live streaming. There are no rules. I plug it in, <laughs> and uh, I'm charging. So, you asked me, is it safe? So, it's a battery, uh -huh. and it's housed in metal, uh -huh. and it's shielded. So, there's no transmission uh, as your phone actually transmits and receives data. Yeah. And that's actually right next to some uh, delicate parts. That's true. So, this is actually completely safe. It's just a battery. It's just holding on to charge. And it's completely protected and housed inside of a secure um, uh, covering, in encasement. So there's actually no danger at all. It doesn't emit uh, any radiation at all. And it's uh, extremely safe and secure. That's cool. Is there, I mean, how do you work that in for maybe women who don't wear belts uh, we're coming of that out with, thickness? We're coming out with a clutch for women. A clutch. So it will be a uh, little clutch, and it will be wireless charging. You'll be able to put your phone on it and it will charge directly through your purse. So we're, we're, we're working on the women's side, and, and uh, I think the men, you know, for me, 
uh, as a busy inventor and entrepreneur, I'm traveling all the time, and my cell phone's dying all the time, yeah. and I just couldn't take it anymore. And one day I said, you know, I can't have my wallet, my phone, my keys, and now i got to carry a bulky battery around with me. Where could I put battery on my body and never worry about it? And I looked down one day and saw my belt and thought, wow, this is going to be great. Now, they're interchangeable. And this is um, 1,600 milliamp yep. hours. So and it's modular. So if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that'll give you full what, one full charge one on a phone. One full charge on your yeah. iPhone. Okay. It's called the Zoo Belt. It's available. Uh, we'll be on the market in about a month. Uh, we're in full production right now. And uh, I'm hopefully we're shipping orders within about a month. And you charge your belt by USB? Yep, the cord that it comes with actually disconnects from the back, and it is a USB on this side, and that plugs in here, and then you plug this in, and you charge your belt. So when you go home, you take your belt off and hang it up, and I take my home, and I charge it. Um, maybe make a fanny pack for my dad. <laughs> he likes the fanny pack. He likes I, the Merce? Yeah. Maybe for <laughs> your Merce? Yeah. No, a, a fanny pack specifically. Not over the shoulder, but around the waist. Sure. For the tourists, I suppose. I'm going to try uh, not. We're looking for a high fashion, uh, so we're going <laughs> to try and stick with this. Um, that, that is absolutely fascinating. One more time uh, for social media. Yep. What's your marketing strategy that has worked the best for you on social, getting the word out? Like, what are you going to do uh, based on what you've learned with Scrub Daddy and all of the family, the Scrub family? Sure. <laughs> so what, what are you going to do with this belt to get the message out? So what we'll do is um, we'll create some, some really great content with video. We found that video and animation works the best. If you just do a still post, you don't get much play. So we always try to make something animated with video, with movement in it, and then we follow it up, uh, put it on Facebook, and then we'll start doing some promotions. And as we see that it's great, it's gaining uh, traction, we'll add more money to it. So we might start with $500. We see that that got us a couple thousand people on there. We'll go with $2,000 and anywhere up to five or $6,000. And at that point, we're reaching millions of people. Um, and, and Facebook uh, you know, copies itself onto Instagram. We'll send out Twitter feeds from, uh, on our social media and say, hey, go and check it out. And we're really, really smart. And I gotta give credit to my wife. She's our director of social media and PR. We tag wow. all the different people and all the places that might get us more publicity. For instance, Inc. Magazine, CNBC, um, Shark Tank. We'll tag all of these, and that way people are filtering back and saying, oh wow, that's associated with Shark Tank, that's associated with CNBC, and it actually gets you a lot more play. Did you ever figure out a way to get out of washing the lawn furniture? No. Uh, in fact, uh, I found out now that the best way to keep my marriage together is let my wife do the cooking and I do the cleaning. Yes. Because if you don't, you're going to end up on social media, I or suppose. Or lose 50% of the yeah. business. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the minus the 20% that Lori still got. Oh, well, that's correct. Um, I, I would probably, she'd probably go into partner with my wife instead and they'd yeah, kick me out completely. We shouldn't <laughs> contemplate such things. Uh, great, innovative product. Really looking forward to that yeah. belt coming out. I'm, you, you will absolutely love this dish wand with a suction cup base. It suctions down to your countertop. More suction cups. Like, sucks like this. The vase clips on and you've got literally a bouquet of flowers at your sink. Fantastic. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure. Thanks so much for having us. And on the podcast this week on the Fort Knox podcast, don't miss Tom Siebel. He's the CEO of C3IoT. You might recognize the name if you're into tech, particularly enterprise tech. The guy founded Siebel Systems, sold to Oracle for $4.8 billion. He was also attacked by an elephant and nearly killed while on safari. It is just a harrowing story, but it has a happy ending. Be sure to check out the podcast, Fort Knox. It's F-O-R-T-T-K-N-O-X. You can get it at fortnox.com. Of course, on iTunes, Google Play, all the above. That was John Fort, live from Iconic with CNBC. I hope you enjoyed just the great ideas these entrepreneurs have. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Somebody else we all should have.